It's another new day and another addition to our Worst Punishment series. This time we're bringing you something definitely not for the squeamish. So if you've got a weak constitution or recently ate, maybe click over on another one of our videos. For those of you brave enough though, stay tuned for this episode of the infographics show, Worst Punishments, Sawing in Half. People have been thinking up ingenious ways to kill each other for, well, for as long as there's been people around. Sometimes though, humanity turns murder into something of an art form, and particularly gifted artists have been looking to outdo each other for millennia as they invent ever more creative ways of killing people. The saw was first invented sometime around the 31st century BC, making it one of humanity's oldest tools. While history is unsure of when the saw was then turned into the nefarious purpose of torture and execution, our expert team of historians here at the Infographics Show have deduced that it happened approximately five minutes after its invention. And as proof, they quote the terrible nature of man itself, which we gotta admit is pretty compelling proof. Whatever the case, the saw has a rich history of being used as both a torture and execution device, with the aim being to prolong the suffering of an individual as long as possible. It would, after all, be easier to simply chop someone's limbs or head off, but far less entertaining. One of the earliest and verified accounts of execution via sawing occurred during the reign of Darius II in ancient Persia. Darius II's half-sister and wife, because that's how they got down in those days, was well known to be the real power behind the throne, and after being slighted by the siblings of her daughter-in-law, she ordered them killed. The first sibling to be killed was sawn in half, likely while hanging upside down. If you thought that execution via saw was something reserved for ancient antiquity though, then you should know that as late as 1848 during the Hungarian Revolution, thousands of women, children, and old men were mutilated, roasted over fires, and sawn to pieces. The torture of sawing comes in a few different varieties, and the technique varies with the aims. Sometimes sawing is used as a form of punishment, and not necessarily an outright execution. Thieves, liars, and other minor offenders in some ancient cultures would have hands or feet sawn off, or perhaps entire limbs. This was meant not just to punish and deter crime, but to serve as a very visual warning to everybody else. If you were thinking about shoplifting a candy bar but happened to see a guy with a limb sawn off, you'd probably think twice about nicking that precious sweet. Punishments varied, but criminals could expect to have fingers sawn off individually, or perhaps the entire hand or foot. For more serious offenses, the leg or arm might be sawn off, though perhaps just below the elbow or knee, or the entire limb may be amputated depending on the severity of the crime. You've probably heard of the expression, paying your eight pounds of flesh? Well, in this case, it was taken quite literally. While those who are convicted to punishment via suffering were not meant to die from the experience, or at least from the blood loss, as many would die from infection afterwards, sawing with intent to kill was far more common. In that case, the executioners faced a particular dilemma in that the human body is rather floppy, especially if your victim is screaming and flailing around in agony. To resolve the problem, many cultures got rather inventive about the act. If you've seen our other episodes on punishments and torture, then you already know that the ancient Chinese were rather clever about coming up with ways to maim and mutilate, and when faced with the problem of sawing a floppy human victim in half, they put their best minds to the task. The obvious solution, of course, would be to simply saw a person along the midsection, and this proved to be quite popular not just in China but around the world. Lumberers, in particular, were fond of tying a victim to a tree and then sawing through the victim and into the tree itself. Victims could also be tied to upright wooden poles and then sawed right through the middle. Another technique would be to tie a person down to the ground and then saw them in half using a two-person saw with heavy weights on top of the blade to force the blade to bite down into the flesh. But all of these methods quickly became boring and repetitive, and while it was satisfying to watch someone sawn in half horizontally, the real prize was to saw a person vertically. For many years, this holy grail of execution by saw eluded mankind's best scientists and engineers, until two separate solutions were drawn up in the Far East and in Europe. In China, executioners came up with a clever idea of sandwiching a person between two boards, which could then be pressed together via a system of gears at the top and bottom. The individual would thus be slightly crushed between the two boards, and flail and scream as they might, the task of sawing through their body was made relatively easy. In Europe and the Middle East, victims were strung up and hung upside down, literally turning the world of torture by saw on its head. 
A person would be tied to two poles, with each foot fastened to a pole, and the hands fastened at the bottom of those poles. This kept the victim firmly in place as the executioners moved the saw between the legs and began to saw downwards. While techniques varied, leading death by saw researchers were quick to discover that of the two methods of death by sawing, vertical and horizontal, the vertical sawing ensured that a victim remained alive the longest. This was because when you sawed an individual horizontally, they would often die from massive blood loss relatively quickly. However, when you flipped them upside down, the blood would rush to the head and ensure a victim remained alive and conscious for much longer than normal. Victims killed in this way would stay alive even as the saw reached chest level, and there was of course the added satisfaction of watching a victim's blood and guts fall down onto their faces as they screamed in agony. It was quality family entertainment. Yet some curious mind wondered, what if you sawed a person vertically but from the top down? Well, given the general reluctance by victims to rudely refuse to keep their heads still, a style similar to that employed by the Chinese was necessary, and so victims had their heads strapped to a pole or plank and the sawing would commence from the victim's right to left. Unfortunately for all involved and to the surprise of absolutely nobody, this technique resulted in pretty quick death, since the brain is extremely allergic to being sawed into. Still, sometimes the technique may be handed out as a mercy. Sure, you're going to be executed by sawing in half, but hey, you're getting a real bone toss to you here because you're going to get sawed from the top down. Incredibly, victims still complained that this was cruel and unusual punishment. Honestly, there's just no pleasing some people. Throughout history, there have been several fans of sawing in half. Caligula, the infamous and very crazy Roman Empire in 40 AD, was fond of having people sawn in half while he ate, considering the suffering as an appetizer to dinner. Next time we're out at a restaurant, we know what we're ordering before the main course. Thanks to the fact that Caligula was stark raving mad, there was no shortage of sawing victims either, as he was particularly good at making enemies while declaring himself God replacing the heads of the statues of gods with his own, and generally doing as he pleased with anyone's wife or daughter in his vicinity. 1400 years later, in 1450 AD, the Ottoman Empire resurrected the sawing craze under the patronage of Muhammad the Conqueror. Likely very annoyed with the fact that his next door neighbor Vlad had cemented a special place in history with the amazing nickname of Vlad the Impaler, Muhammad stood in his palace determined to get a cool nickname of his own. Muhammad the Strangler? Nah, sounds too creepy. Muhammad the Disemboweler? Kinda cool, but also far too barbaric and not fitting of royalty. Muhammad the Tsar? Hmm, now there's something. Muhammad got his chance to put this new nickname to the test when his armies conquered Constantinople in 1453 AD. Muhammad gave his army a three-day pass to do as they pleased with the citizens of the conquered city, and for three bloody days soldiers exercised every imaginable cruelty on the population. Sawing people in half, though, was featured prominently, and Muhammad decided that Vlad may have his impaling, but he'd get his sawing. Years later, when his army conquered another small city, 500 prisoners were sent to Constantinople, where they were each sawn in two. A year before that, though, 400 Christian knights had surrendered to the Ottoman forces under the promise that they would have their lives spared. Muhammad agreed, then immediately changed his mind, and had each man sawn in half. Yet despite his best efforts, Muhammad the Tsar would never really stick, probably because it's a pretty dumb nickname, and instead he'd have to make do with the Conqueror instead. Sawing in half has been a mainstay of human history since its invention, but thankfully the practice seems to have gone out of style during the 19th century. Sadly, humanity now has to face a future where we'll never get to experience the delight of sawing people in half with the great variety of different saws modern technology has developed. We'll never get to see someone sawn in half by a bandsaw for instance, or a chainsaw. And what about a water saw, a device that shoots water at such high pressure it can cut directly into the heart of steel? We bet ancient torturers are right now shedding tears that they never got to see that one actually happen. Yet as we're well aware, humanity is absolutely terrible, so keep your chin up, because odds are that eventually civilization will collapse into itself and we'll all be getting sawn in half by the angry robots that rule us all. Would you have preferred to be sawn in half vertically or horizontally? Let us know in the comments. Also, make sure to check out our other video, Most Horrifying Punishments in the History of Mankind. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.